I think I always liked a challenge, realizing I wasn't having enough protein. I could have some protein, but not to what I needed to have. I have no back at all, so I love to kind of gain a, a back of some sort. And definitely noticing that now, my posture has changed, V framing as well from my back. All right, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. We're recording a Fit Vegan success story with uh, a client that I personally coach, Bernard, who had an incredible transformation, who was able to lose 20 pounds, but also build some lean muscle. All right, welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast. I'm your show host, Maxim Seguin, and I'm the founder and CEO of Fit Vegan Coaching, a company that is on a mission to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and reduce their risk of chronic illnesses by 2033 and a million by 2050. I believe that having a fit, healthy body in mind is the foundation to living an incredible life, and this is what we'll show will give you if you choose to listen and implement. Enjoy the episode and have a great day. So Bernard, welcome to the show, man. Excited to have you on. Thanks, coach. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Well, let, let's dive into your story uh, because, you know, you, you traveled a lot. There was a lot that happened uh, during our time together. And so if you can kind of share with people a little bit more, uh, a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do. So people have a, a full context that this is not the only thing that you've been doing for the past several months. Uh, you know, that you had a job, that you traveled, they had all of these things. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I've always been an avid traveler, um, I have a full-time job as a manager as well. So busy during the daytime, um, usually just need to schedule my workouts for evening time. So it's been good kind of building a routine that I'm sure I had the time, but I never made time for it. So it's nice to kind of make it a priority. And I'm even finding it now, like days that I don't work out, I kind of feel like really grumpy. So like I missed something or something's missing. So it's been good kind of building that into routine. I think my fitness journey probably started a few years back. Um, so I usually do my annual checkups and just happened to be a few years back that I've always been a skinny kid, but I was starting to have high cholesterol. So I like, I needed to do something to change. So that's where I kind of started my fitness journey. And yes, I went to the gym. I joined some classes as well, but something was still missing. Like I was still skinny fat all the time. So I needed something to change. So I think around November, I've, I've actually been following you coach for quite a few years back, but I always thought like, yeah, he's a celebrity. I'm all the way here in Winnipeg. I don't, I don't know when I'm ever going to meet you live in the cold interaction. <laughs> I know I live in the cold, <laughs> cold winter peg because no one. So, yeah. so like, ah. He's, he's all the way in LA. I feel like we're ever going to connect. So just send a response, I think, to one of your posts to Mona. And then we just connected, had our first conversation. And I think one thing that really stuck out was like you said, it needed to be a fit both ways. And I think I knew that speaks testament to the commitment that's needed on both sides. So I think that's where really started. And I think what really got me was you said, you're like the ad maker, like, oh, perfect. I've, I've never had ads before. I want to have ads before 40 and kind of go on that journey from there. So, so it's been a good journey from December until now. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, first of all, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yeah. Let's, uh, what was it that made you want to take on the, this transformation, right? Because, you know, you're living your life, you're busy. Like, again, you weren't necessarily, um, you know, 40 pounds overweight when, when we <laughs> started or 60 or 100 pounds overweight. So, you know, you're, you're, you're in a position where I find a lot of people are like, I'm not, the fittest that I want to be, but mm -hmm. it's not that bad. And then they decide to kind of cruise through those years staying like that. So what made you actually want to kind of level up your fitness and level up your health um, before you reached out to me? I think I always liked a challenge, but I need that direction piece of things. And that's what you kind of provided in your coaching one on it, which has really helped out. Um, for me, like I've always been skinny, not obese or anything, but I think body fat percentage was probably where like, okay, I'm at like 20%, I need to get it down, but how? And I yeah. think that was the hard part is really, yeah, read magazines or see posts, but nothing really defined exactly what I needed to exactly do. And I think that's where the difference was. Yeah, because your body type before you came in, it was kind of similar to mine when I grew up as well. I was more on the skinny fat side. So like with, with a shirt on, I looked skinny and I took my shirt off and I was like, I should probably work out. And I was like stuck in that middle where mm -hmm. I look great with a t-shirt on, but I didn't want to take my t-shirt off. All right. Yeah. And, Same um, boat. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, how long have you been vegan as well? 
Um, I've been actually vegetarian for probably over 15 years. And then I think just vegan when I started the program itself. So it was a slight adjustment change, but still a relatively big change as well, too. Yeah. So what was left that you needed to cut out? Was it the fish or the dairy? Uh, it was just eggs and dairy. So dairy, I never had too much, but eggs will be like that quick shortcut. Just like, okay, what is there to eat? Can't think of anything. Cook eggs. So. Yeah. Oh man. I was, uh, side story on the eggs. I was with a uh, Johnny juicer. He's another like vegan influencer online. And we were playing mm-hmm. basketball yesterday and we talked about before we were vegan and eating eggs. And I used to drink 12 eggs. Ooh. for breakfast like i would crack <laughs> it in like rocky style um because that's what my bodybuilding coach had me do at the time so i'm happy i transitioned to veganism i'm happy you transitioned to ve- <laughs> to veganism yeah. um we i want to talk about the fat loss but you know the fact that you transitioned to eating feeding and you cut out eggs and dairy did you notice a little bit of a difference in your health or anything like that it's okay if you didn't but i'm just curious if you noticed any any changes yeah, I think that was the biggest lifestyle change overall, not just like the eggs and dairy and whatnot, but so like I always love, yes, I'll eat vegetarian, but it would be like the soy proteins or like the fake meat or are usually like things that are like deep fried. So it'd be like, yeah, deep fried soy protein. Yeah, the exact same thing. But that was a whole lifestyle change of eating, actually eating healthy vegetarian or vegan foods. Yeah. So how uh, was there like any gut response to it? Like how was your gut adjusting? How was your energy adjusting? Uh, I think it was, it was pretty good. I think it was the tougher part was when traveling out and about as we like can't really cook my own meals. It'd be usually something that's deep fried or quick or like a mixture of the two when eating out or while traveling. So I think that was probably the toughest part. And we yeah. had like three or four different trips this year alone. So. Yeah, you've had a lot of travels um, and we'll dive into kind of your strategy for that. But I was just, you know, just looking at your initial consultation, the goal is to lose 10 to 15 pounds. We've lost 20 pounds mm-hmm. from your, your starting point to, to your lowest point. And now, now we're into a reverse dieting and speeding up your metabolism after. So I'm curious, like, wh- how was, you know, the first few months of the program into ultimately you changing how you're eating, but also having a, a little bit more structured plan for, for your fitness? Yeah, I think like the first three months is probably where I saw like the most weight loss itself, but not necessarily fat loss, I think. Well, semi fat loss, but it was like, yeah, steady amount. And I think I had like a plateau around like the fourth or fifth month. And that's where I kind of like reached out, asked more questions about, I really like to understand like where the journey is, what's the end goal, what's the milestones. And you're able to answer those questions. So like on the fourth month, they're like, okay, I'm hitting here, plateauing. What do I need to do differently? Like what's the next step? Like what's next? So I'm always curious about that part. And I think that really helped with it too, is knowing like, okay, next is this phase, next is this one. So I think that that's what really helped get above that pl- plateau piece of it. And also yeah. like understanding like the workouts that you have set in place. So like, it was like going to be, I think it was like less reps, more weight to like, okay, that's different. So I wanted to understand like why we did it this way. And it was awesome. You we were able to answer it. And that's what really helped on that, on my journey piece. Yeah, because we wanted you to retain as much muscle as possible while you were cutting, mm-hmm. right? And, yeah. you know, it's like, and also in general for people listening to, if at the beginning of the fat loss, it's always a little bit faster, especially if you have like more weight to lose. Mm-hmm. But the lean, the leaner you get, the harder it is because your body is really fighting to kind of hold on um, to that fat because to a certain extent, some of it is essential for for, for survival, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but think, yeah, man, you're, you, oh, sorry, go for it. Sorry, I just came to mind is like, I think the biggest part around nutrition was like, when we were kind of starting to track it, it was like realizing I wasn't having enough protein. I would have some protein, but not to what I needed to have. And I would have less protein, more calories each day. And I think that was a nice big learning as well too. Yeah, that shift really makes a difference. And I was just pulling up your graph for your body fat. Highest point you were at 19.17%. And then your lowest point, you went down to 12.113%. Uh, percent, right? So it's like a a seven percent body fat drop, and that's kind of what happens, right? You kind of increase that protein. You slowly do the calorie deficit. Mm-hmm. Has that been different from what you've tried in the past to get in shape? Like, have you ever done like drastic calorie cut? You've gone slower. Like, what's kind of your previous history? I think I never even thought about the nutrition side. So I always thought, yeah, I'm vegetarian. I'm good. I I have that. I don't need to worry about it. Covered. Yeah, I just I just need a workout. That's it. So all I did was like, yeah, I'll work out. I did like 
in classes and whatnot, but it really wasn't doing anything. Like, yeah, I'll gain some muscle a little bit, but really wasn't losing any like body fat, et cetera, from there. So the nutrition side, I think, is where it was missing. And I think that was the important part of this transformation yeah. and the coaching. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, fitness builds the body, nutrition reveals it. You know, you can train hard all you want, but if the nutrition is not dialed in, it, it definitely makes it harder to get leaner. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, what are changes that you've noticed in your body, in your clothes, in your day to day life, from in your strength, from from this transformation? Because there, there's a big difference in your photos, right? The ab outline kicking in. Uh, mm-hmm. From your side shot, from the front, you're a lot leaner. Your chest is tighter. There's more muscle definition in the back. Yeah, I think I've actually retained muscle as well. Um, and I think we talked at the very, very beginning, like the first few months. So like, yeah, I have no back at all. So I'd love to kind of gain a, <laughs> a back of some sort. So, and definitely noticing that now is like actually, like my posture has changed. Yeah. Um, v framing as well from the back. So. Um, and yeah, and stomach's kind of coming in as well too, bleaks and whatnot. So really happy with the transformation and the big change as well too. Yeah. So let, let's talk about some of the obstacle that you've encountered, you know, throughout, throughout the journey. What was a, what was a big one that you, you kind of had to overcome and kind of learn to get back on track and how did you get back on track? Yeah. I think near the beginning was really, when I went to the gym, it would be like, okay, I'll do maybe a bench press, maybe a machine, but I've never done like the squat rack or certain machines itself. So I think there was that fear of it too. Um, but with the videos and like the tips and tactics that you have of it, kind of brought me out of my comfort zone, use different machines and different weights and equipment. And that's that's really brought in what I could do at the gym. So when I go to the gym, it would be like, yeah, okay, push ups, sit ups, a few dumbbells and that's it. But I really wasn't pushing myself or, challenging which which i should have been recording anyways because i i like challenging myself to the next piece so if i know i could do like this amount of weight i should be able to do five more pounds on the next one yeah so i think that's been a big learning of like really new equipment uh the new ways of working out as well big challenge was probably when going out and traveling and whatnot like i was supposed to be like i think on a cutting phase for one of the trips and it ended up being the total opposite i was gaining more weight because it really wasn't following plan during that time. So um, I think one of the other podcasts you did was really drawing that straight line and then where you like, veer off path. So the further you go off the path, it's further away from that center line hitting that goal part of it. So, so I think that's where I was going veering off, but I had to like, come back right in. So. Yeah, I do like, I want, I want people to understand and also for you to kind of seal that for yourself. Mm-hmm. You, you don't, you go off track and was ever a part in your brain of like, Oh my God, I messed up this whole thing and I'm not going to succeed. Or was it more like, Oh, okay. When I come back, I just got to get back on track. And now I you know you've lost 20 pounds so far. Right. So was mm-hmm. there ever that moment of like, Oh man, I messed up the whole thing. I should just maybe quit. Uh, yeah, I think a mix of both. So yeah, there was one time you're like, Oh my God, I screwed up. Like, I'm like gain five more pounds and it's going to take me another month to cut down again before going to the next phase. So, um, but then put my mind to it. I think we talked about it too. We changed some of the plans and we dived down and then really brought it back in as well. I think it was also understanding my body too. So I think we figured out that sodium really affects my body weight. Like if I don't have sodium, I'm instantly gaining like two pounds right away. So, so I think that yeah, was yeah. learning like, okay, I gained two pounds. I know I probably ate out. That's a lot of sodium. Was able to bring it back down and definitely felt better that way too. So, yeah. And so, how does your, how do you now compute, you know, being, you know, 20 pounds lighter and being leaner than when you started, even though you had these moments? Do you feel now that, like, hey, whenever I go off track, it's not actually the end of the world? You can mm-hmm. kind of see what happens when you get back at it. Yeah, definitely understand my body a lot more, and that's really helped too. So, like, yep, even though I've gained one or two pounds, I know what the reason was it was for it, and then what I needed to counteract it and bring it back down as well. So I was still able to kind of enjoy going out with friends, eating out and whatnot, um, but still keeping on track with everything. So I think that's a big part was I didn't have to go on, like, massive dieting or fasting, which I hear, like, some coworkers are doing. is like they're doing a, a fasting plan. They won't eat for... 
like hours. It won't eat till dinner time, and they'll have like a gigantic meal. And like, oh, okay, that doesn't seem healthy or normal, but everyone body responds differently. So, oh, they should do the program. They get better results. I'll, That's just, I'll, just, oh, yeah. I'll just put that in there. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, like. If you look at their thing, do you want to do that for the rest of your life in terms of eating pattern or do you want to do what you've been doing? That's correct. Yeah, they're able to live, enjoy, and kind of took your learnings or teachings for traveling is kind of, yeah, have your protein shake, have a block of tofu, and then still enjoy the eating time going out. So that's yeah. what's made it a lot easier. Yeah, I feel like it, it makes it more sustainable and enjoyable because mm -hmm. then you know that for dinner time, you you have not say a restriction but a guideline mm -hmm. while still being able to enjoy yourself mm -hmm. yeah do you find that your your strategy for traveling has evolved as you've gone through i think you did like about four trips since we've been working yeah. together so you felt like you you handled some of the situations a lot better yeah that's correct like the first few times is being okay guessing okay this is how much i've been eating uh, okay, a few days I miss reporting it in, and then now I was like, okay, we're on day three. Let's just skip it and get back track when I come back home. Versus keeping consistent, even if I drop like one day, is like okay, get back to it the next day. Versus the at the end of the trip, then I come back and like, okay, I'm home now. Let's start all over again. So, so yeah, definitely yeah. learned a lot. Yeah, second day you go off track. You're like, ah, five days later I'll come back. You're ten pounds heavy. You're like, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's nah, too big of a gap. <laughs> yeah, I could have prevented that. Yeah, and it. Yeah, that's interesting. So, how do you feel like your brain navigates that? Because when you do, for example, you're on a trip for five days. The second day, you kind of forget to, you know, monitor what you're, what you're eating, and you're like, ah, I'll just do it when I get back home. Do you feel that those last three days you would allow yourself to go a little bit crazier knowing that you're coming back to the plan when you came back home? Or were you still being moderate about it? I think near the beginning it was like, okay, uh, last day, okay, I should get back to kind of some of the things. So when I hop on the scale, it's not as bad as I thought it would be or as bad as I it should be. So. But now I think it's more moderating. So when I come back, jump on the scales, like, okay, it's not as big of a drastic because I knew what exactly I need to do. So like breakfast, I have this, lunch, I have this, and then dinner I can enjoy. So. Yeah. Do you handle better now the fluctuation on the scale, having a greater understanding that, you know, when you do consume some sodium or foods that potentially would cause more water retention, does your brain go like, oh shit, I'm off track? Or does it go like, ah, I understand why. And I'm just going to get back at it and kind of, you know, it'll drop back in a few days. A bit of both. So I think we're on reverse dieting right now. So we're increasing the calorie intake, but my weight has still kind of been hovering the exact same thing. It's like, oh man, I thought it would be like spiking up with the calorie intake. So, so part of me is like, yeah, I understand my body, how much sodium I take in or food and whatnot. But on the reverse dieting side, it's like, okay, this is different. I thought it would be this is what my results should be or would be, but it isn't. So it's been kind of good. Yeah, it Not is confusing. It, it is, is confusing, confusing yeah. psychologically, like still, right? Yeah, I'm just still understanding what reverse dieting was. So like, okay, I'll trust the process. And yeah, I've been co yourself coaching me and guiding me through it. So yeah, so it's basically like we're, we're eating we're eating more food at a <laughs> specific rate versus kind of you know when you're traveling, you're just like, I'll have this, I'll have that, I'll have that. And you have a ton of sodium with it and it adds up. It's like very, as you can see, it's very slow, right? And methodical mm -hmm. how we're increasing the food. And that's why your weight is able to hover in the same spot. Because if I just did a massive spike, you'd mm -hmm. obviously have a massive spike in your weight as well. Yeah. In terms of in terms of the strength training, how has that been for you to, to, to have some structure now to the plan? Have you noticed any increase in strength being able to do exercise that potentially you struggled with before? Yeah, like as simple as like the other day I was doing a bench press. And I was like, and I haven't, we, I don't think that was part of the routine for like a few workouts or a few weeks already. So, like, okay, hopping back in this year, here, like I'm probably having to start a bit slower or on a lighter weight. But like, man, I could actually do a lot more weight and I added more weight. So, I think that extra boost of energy and calories has really helped. And that strength, even though I know we talked about it too, is. Even though I was doing other exercises, not specifically the major ones, it was still working out certain other muscles itself. So when I was doing the exercise, yeah. that strength was still there. That strength was still growing. So, Yeah, a lot of the accessory exercise are going to help with some of the more compound exercise. It's just 
sometimes stressful on the body to do a ton of of compound. So I kind of made sure that I switched it up for you. Um, mm-hmm. What is a um, what is a I don't know how to say this in a non weird way because <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell the story and then I'll try to ask the question. But we had a client <laughs> that dropped like I think she dropped like sixty pounds, and she she just came on a podcast one day. And she was like. I was showering the other day and I discovered new parts of me that I didn't even know were there. Like she's like, it was, and it was so much faster to wash myself because I was smaller. So I'm trying to ask is like, do you physically notice any differences or feel any differences in your body? Like to me, when I get leaner, like my lats stick out and my shoulders get run. I'm like, Oh yeah, this, this is hard. This feels good. Was there, is there any of those like things that you've noticed for yourself? Like I said earlier, like my back. So my, my back was like flat as a board or, we're not even existent there. And now it actually yeah, like has that curve, has lats showing and whatnot in that V-shaped piece of it, of it too. So, yeah. yeah. You do have a good I'll V-shape be, to your body. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'll be honest, yeah. when I look in the mirror, it's like, yeah, definitely look leaner than what I do in probably photos. And when I was like, oh, horrible lighting probably, but like, I look good in the mirror. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but again, your your photo your update photos look great. Uh, but no, I get it. If, if, if you don't know how to do the lighting, um, it definitely can change if your body looks flat or more defined, mm-hmm. uh, there's definitely some some trickery to to the photos, all right? Um, so I'm curious, like while you were in the program, what were some of the tools that were the most helpful for you to, again, see progress, but to be able to um, be consistent? Even though, again, life happens, we take imperfect actions, we get off track. Like what were some of the tools that help you to get back on track and be consistent and ultimately be in the position that you're in now? Uh, so the app was definitely very, very helpful. So like, I don't have to think about it. I don't need to make decisions up on my workout. It's really, I hop on the treadmill, open up the app, have a preview of what the workout's going to be, and then go right to it. Um, on like the longer cardio days, I have busy days, so I may not be able to hop on all the uh, calls that we have. So I pop on the podcast when I need to do like a longer cardio run. So it's like, yeah, perfect. It's like 45 ish minutes to an hour. That's the length of my walk on the treadmill or on the bike itself. So it gives me something to listen to learn as well, as well as doing the exercise or workout. So, so if you live a busy, busy life, you might not be able to hop on those specific calls that are still great support. You still listen afterwards. And that's been very helpful as well too. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. How does it feel to be able to listen to other people that are on a similar journey as you? Like, did it kind of help to like affirm potentially some of the struggles or some of the speed bumps or kind of some of the the steps that you were going through? Yeah. So knowing that someone's in the exact same boat or may have a question that I didn't think of and they're like, oh, that's a great question. Didn't even think about that. So definitely learning a lot more from that as well, too. Yeah. Building up my knowledge on from everyone else's learning yeah how how are the weekly check-ins for you you can talk shit about them even though i did them for you it's okay (laughs) i want authentic answers (laughs) no they've been good like it really keeps us in track so like same in my line of work is we do regular touch points or rally coaching as well too so it's nice hearing on the other side is like yeah where am i on track off track exactly for my own fitness and workout and keeping things positive but also keeping me accountable so i think those were really important things on the weekly checkings yeah let me ask you a, a deeper question like i'm I'm, yeah. I'm every time i do these these recordings with members i'm always trying to get the the little psychological shift that kind of mm-hmm. gets people to to be successful um so have you tried to kind of lean out before build a back get abs prior to being in the program mm, yeah i would say like yeah so i did like orange theory for example so i went to classes eight times eight times a month it's similar kind of yeah the coaching's done there for you but i think it's missing that nutrition piece or the accountable accountability side so it would always be changing which is kind of good at the same time but then when i come back to this, that same exercise we okay how much weight did i do on that one so yeah. yes, I was getting some strength, but not fully because I would be either doing a weight that I thought would be safer instead versus challenging myself. Yeah. Not to talk shit about orange theory, but for body recomposition, it's not the best because you don't get to totally like, different. Yeah. progress your weights and kind of like build that muscle because it's so fast paced, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. A great exercise, cardiovascular, but yeah. Okay. So you've tried before. So 
why <laughs> do you feel that this time, again, not considering the workout, because obviously it's amazing and nutrition is amazing, but mm -hmm. what do you think made it so that you were able to stick to it as consistently as you did to be able to lose 20 pounds? Like what was different about this time? I love checklists. So like the app literally states out like, yeah, this is what you need to do today. This is what you need to do tomorrow. These are like the four or five things you need to do and just love checking them off. And I think that kept me accountable as well as the weekly check-ins and like reminders and like, Hey, this is what we need to do this week, et cetera. So, and also to have you there to answer any questions. So I think near the beginning is we be like, how do I do a deadlift properly? Yeah. As simple as like, oh yeah, yeah, just record it. I'll send you some notes and one. I was like, wow, didn't know that they could do that. So really that personalization has really helped as well too. And really answering the questions that I may not have felt comfortable asking like a personal trainer at the gym or something, or another person in the view, it was way easier to like, yeah, record. What's the feedback you provide for me? And just so I could do the exercise properly, reverse, like reduce injuries and also doing it to gain the most muscle. Yeah. Um, and like mentally, what made you continue even with those moments of, of travel or, 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 or going off track? Like what was the thing you told yourself that was like, okay, like I feel like I messed up potentially the whole thing, but you know, I'm still going to stick to it. Like what made you push more on the side of like, let's just continue with this. I think, uh, well, it was an investment in myself as well. So that initial investment piece of it, I need to continue through it. Um, and really, yeah, I have that goal and challenge to get abs before 40. So still on that journey as well, but it's, it's come a long way. Yeah. Was that investment worth it for you? Oh yeah. Yeah. And I think it has, I didn't think it would be like a full lifestyle change, but that's what it has been as a full lifestyle change itself. So from my routines to how the week goes. Um, and everyone's benefiting too. Like he's trying to hit like 10,000 steps a day. The dog is loving it. So like, he knows, sure. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We'll like walk and we like, ah, oh, I have like another like 800 steps to go. Okay. We're going to do another few laps around. And he's like, he's loving it. <laughs> yeah. He sees you holding the leash. He's like, yes, we're going back outside. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. Some days we'd be like, oh, I didn't get enough steps. Okay, we're going on walk number two. And then we're like, you just jumped in for joy. Yeah, as is it with Tempe, every time Ivy will hold a leash, Tempe will yeah. like get so excited and jump and almost like four-legged kick Ivy in the thigh. So just kind of like, you know, he kicks off a wall and kind of spit, but he yeah, does yeah. that off of Ivy. And Ivy's so small, poor her. She just oh. like packs up every time. But yeah, he's excited. <laughs> Dogs are great to get your steps in. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, uh, have you noticed, um, this is just me being purely curious. Have you noticed other people being more, uh, attracted to the idea of eating plant-based out of seeing your transformation and your journey of, from the people around you? Yeah, I think I've always been like a role model within like my friends group or coworker group to eat more plant-based or healthier too. Um, and I think that's where I've always I took on this journey as well too, is to not be just skinny fat because I'm vegetarian. I want to make sure that it's being a role model and leading that you way as well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and being more of the fit vegan versus just, just the vegan or just the vegetarian guy. So, so I think that's been a motivating piece. Yeah. And would, so we'd love to ask you for, so there's people listening that are in the program that are, you know, thinking of doing the program or they're on their own journey of becoming fitter and becoming healthier. Mm -hmm. What are, what are pieces of advice that you can give people now that you've reached, you know, I would say your first goal, because just to kind of preface that, you know, for you and for everyone, like I understand that I'm a small glimpse in the history and a timeline of your life. And all I wish is that you were heading down a specific path and that I kind of sped up your results for the current goal that you have in mind, right? Because once you get to, you know, we have a lot of members in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, like once you get to those ages, like we had a client, like he's like, my goal is that I could put a sock on off of one foot and to have the balance and for my stomach not to be in the way. You know what I mean? And now here we're talking about having a six pack. So goals change as we kind of get older. So I hope that I've sped up the results so you to get to where you want to with the current goal that you have. 
but I've changed the directory. So now you're equipped with knowledge and tools and maybe a, a slightly different perspective as to how life could be lived. So that, you know, as you change that one degree in 20 years from now, it leaves you in a very different place. Um, and so like that, any piece of advice for people that are on that path and that are like in that journey that you were on of like shifting that little angle to have a completely different outcome for the life. I think it's really celebrating the small wins and kind of building on that and really taking that first step. So for me, it was like, yeah, followed you for years. I like, do I message you? Do I respond? Like taking that leap of faith and like, just do it, like, go for it, test it out. Um, and I think it just builds from step. there. Yeah. I think it's just taking that first step and taking baby steps. So can't jump. To, no, to the top like of the mountain. Analogy. Yeah, you know, I get. I've said that. Take before. a step yeah, by you step. Can't jump on top of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. Pe people get excited and they see the mountain. Like, wow, it's a big mountain. They think that they have to do it in one step, but ultimately, you got there. Sometimes you move forward. Sometimes you move backwards. And then it's like, okay, well, we got to go back to, to to moving forward. Um, yeah, I'm curious. Like, what was it that? When did you start following me online? You said many years. I'm curious what what phase of life was I at at that point? Was I in Vancouver? It might be, yeah. I think like two, three years. I'm trying to go off memory here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nice. Interesting. So, yeah. what what was it that like made you do like okay, I'm gonna connect and kind of do this and like kind of take that that leap? Like, what was that internal feeling that you kind of had to go through? Yeah, I think it was like around November. It was like, okay, December's coming up. It's a new year. What am I going to do differently in 2024 to really look after myself from like a health-wise perspective? So like starting to get injured a little bit easier and whatnot. So like, I need to do something different. So like, okay, post popped up and like, I think everything was it. meant to happen and meant to be. So like, okay, I'm going to send a text and see what happens. Oh, awesome. And I connected. Well, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm happy you did, man, because, again, this is like changing the trajectory of your life. You've dropped 20 pounds. You're not going through the reverse dieting process. You now have a back, mm -hmm. right? We've got some abs coming in. Um, how is the – a lot of people ask about reverse dieting. So how is how is how is it feeling for you to kind of add more food but not add weight? It's been good, yeah. So I was able to have – a, lot, a little bit more food each time so that that's been great it's building up on the energy well as, as well too i know you talked about like uh like yeah sometimes being in this cutting phase is like the most miserable time it's like oh okay i didn't think it was that too bad but then there were some days that thinking back now i was like oh yeah i was probably was a hard miserable one. then yeah i was probably <laughs> i'm that was miserable then <laughs> yeah but i definitely seeing the energy build up from now and it's it's really satisfying to see that, yeah i'm not gaining as much weight as I thought it would balloon up to be. Um, yeah. But I think that's that's the strategy and like that's the expertise that you have that it's going on the right path in the reverse dieting stage. Yeah, and also again, some of the food you're eating, it, it, you know, it's stacking up glycogen also in your body. And so mm -hmm. that, that theoretically has weight on the scale, right? Like if you cut out carbs, mm -hmm. you can lose eight to 10 pounds of weight. Um, even if you eat at this at, at your maintenance calorie. So just from depleting a glycogen tank in your body, you can lose eight to 10 pounds of glycogen. So it's not fat, it's just your energy storage. So now we're replenishing more of it because we're increasing your food. Um, mm -hmm. And did you notice an increase in strength yet? Slowly? Oh, yeah. As, okay. Yeah. okay. I've been good. kind of think powering through my workouts a little bit quicker as well too. Like, oh, okay, I got energy. I don't need to rest as long in between. So maybe Sometimes I might not wait or rest the full minute, 30 seconds. I'll be, okay, hop into the next workout or the next rep right away. Yeah, and that's why it's important. Again, that's why I wanted you to go through reverse dieting and forever fun because you can't stay in a deficit forever. Like uh, you have less energy, you're not as strong. It's not the most optimal state to be in. So I'm excited for you to be done reverse dieting because you think you have energy and strength now. Wait mm -hmm. till you're at the top of your food, back to your maintenance. It's a significant difference. You feel like Superman. Um, for multiple reasons, because you now have more lean muscle mass, you're also leaner, um, you're stronger as well. But there's also a greater contrast in how you were feeling at the end of a cut versus now. And it's kind of recent, right? It's like, a, it's like four months reverse dieting. So you'll have that point of comparison of like, oh, yeah, I feel incredible now. So I'm excited for you to be at that at that peak of reverse dieting. Yeah, yeah. 
So uh, last question we'd love to ask you, um, any piece of advice or message that you'd like to pass off to um, someone that was in your position that is on the fence of working with us or kind of taking on this journey? If you had the opportunity to talk to Bernard two years ago when you started following me and, you know, wanted to reach out back then, what is a piece of advice for him? I think it's really just do it, like hop right onto it. You want to see a change, you need to take that first step or one simple message, I think is all that it really took. And then it's really changed the whole lifestyle and routine in general. So a lot of learnings from it, from just that one simple text message or response back. And you gain a whole community as well. So it's not just your self coach, it's also a, a whole community of other Fit Vegan members as well too, that are going through their own journey. But everyone is really there to help support each other. So whether it be like a simple question or asking other questions that we may not have thought of and that we all learn together as well. Yeah. Oh, well, that's beautiful, man. Well, I'm really happy you sent that message. I'm really happy that we connected. And you still have we still have some time together for, for me to coach you and kind of go through your reverse lighting process. But I hope we meet one day. I might be going back to Canada in like end of October. If, you know, fingers crossed, everything goes well. Um, so, yeah, even there or if ever you're in L.A., we'll definitely catch up, do a workout. I'll bring you through a, a leg workout because that's typically what I do when I connect with members. It's just, you know, a session of, of joyful suffering um, so that you can be sore two days after. <laughs> but then we eat good food after, so it's all worth it. Oh, yeah. It's like the best and worst feeling, like leg day like the soreness but then after you know oh, okay that was a good workout <laughs> yeah you ex um a lot of the members that i've trained with it's like oh that's what intensity is like yeah they're like oh th this hurts right dr down <laughs> i finished shooting with them two three days yeah. after it's like oh, i have a hard time moving my arms <laughs> and lifting and lifting my arms my shoulders are burning so um yeah if ever you're in la we'll catch up when i'm in canada uh yeah i don't know if i'm gonna go to winnipeg because um yeah, it's Winnipeg. But if ever you're in Quebec or in Vancouver, we could make something happen. Yeah, I've never been to Winnipeg. It was just never a place that attracted me to kind of go and visit. I heard you drive through it. That's what a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a good spot for filming. So now with the direct flight from L.A. to Winnipeg, there's actually quite a few films that are happening in Winnipeg itself. So. Really? Yeah, it's, it's good taking over Vancouver. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It has a good oh. uh, movie tax credit for filmmakers. So, yeah, you'll see oh. a lot of filming happening in Winnipeg. So all the Hallmark movies, and I think there's a few coming out as well, too, to keep an eye out for that are shot here in Winnipeg. Oh, that's awesome. Hallmark, that, they have the books. Is that the, the ones like with the book with the guy that's shirtless on top of it? Uh, something like that. Hallmark movies. So you see it on like Netflix or Disney, different yeah. Hallmark oh, movies. Okay. Also. The classic Christmas time. Movie oh, itself, okay. So. Yeah. Sorry. Wrong thing for the people listening. I don't know. That was a weird story, <laughs> but so my, I used to model and my friend was like super bodybuilder buff and he started to do photo shoots to be on the cover of those books where it's like the shirtless cowboy. And it's like a love story. He was uh, the guy okay. on the cover of some of those books and I've been trying to find a book <laughs> so I can buy one and like support him, but I haven't been able to find one. But anyways, that was yeah, it was a weird cowboy story. But yeah, Bernard, man, I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to record with me and pleasure coaching you. I'm excited for you to kind of complete your transformation and a reverse dieting. And uh, yeah, for everyone listening, if you want more information about the work that we do, down below there's a link for you to book your free application call and we can help you on your transformation just like we help Bernard. All right, so Bernard, thank you for jumping on, man. And everyone, we will see you in the next episode. Bye. Thanks, coach.